Mr. Blake, your campaign against the underworld is finally getting some results. Yeah? Rankin and Spinelli want to see you this afternoon. Oh, good. Call Martin Stafford and have him come over. I want my lawyer here when I talk to those crooks. Come in. Get yourself another police reporter, boss. I'm leaving. Don't tell me they've scared you off, too. I didn't get this from fright. When I came to, this was stuck in my hand. Get out of town. I'm taking the hint. There goes our fourth police reporter in six months. I'll show them they can't intimidate me. That's all, Dexter. Oh, your daughter called. Yeah? She asked me to tell you not to forget that double day is reporting back to work today. Forget it. That's all I've heard about at home ever since he wrote her he was getting out of the army. She also said to remind you about giving him that promotion. It's beyond me. She could have her pick of dozens of fine young men in her own social set, but no, she has to throw herself away on an insignificant copy boy like Doubleday. That's what's known as love. You mean insanity. But if I don't promote him, I'll get no peace at home. I'll promote him, Dexter. We need a new police report. Take it easy, Chief. That's a pretty rough assignment for a nice kid like Doubleday. Why, that mob would run him out of town in a couple of days. That's what I say, Dexter. We've got a new police reporter. Oh, you don't know how swell it is being home and seeing you again and having my old job on the paper waiting for me. I've got a surprise for you. You're not going back to any old job as copy boy. Well, we could never get married on that salary. I made Daddy promise to give you a promotion. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. Businessmen resent that sort of thing. He's, he's doing enough just taking me back. <laughs> I love you for being so modest. But that's not the right approach with Daddy. The way to impress him is to assert yourself. I don't know, but... I'll try. Remember that snapshot you sent me from Leite? Oh, one of the boys asked me to pose for it. Well, I, I had it enlarged and framed for you to, to get to Daddy as a present when you report. Pretty big, isn't it? I, I appreciate your doing it, Penny, but... Well, what's your father going to think when I give that to him? <laughs> Don't you worry about that. It's part of my plan to remind him you're back on the job. Doubleday the Wonder Boy goes to war a mouse, comes home a wolf. Hey, sister. Oh, hello, Miss Blake. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, daughter, you forgot your present for Daddy. Readers, I make this pledge. Twice must go. Uh, to the underworld, I say this. You, come in. You cannot intimidate me. I'm in this fight to the finish. I'm not afraid of... Do you like it, Mr. Blake? What is it? Why, it's me, sir. A little present for you as a token of my appreciation for taking me back on the paper. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, Dexter, uh, take care of this. It'll be a pleasure to hang Doubleday. <laughs> Son, you've come back just in time to do this paper a great service. I have? My boy, I need help in my campaign to clean up this city. I need a man with brains, courage, resourcefulness. You do? Look at this beautiful town of ours, being undermined by organized crime. The man that ferrets it out will be our public hero number one. 
That's the chance I'm giving you. Me? That's your new assignment. I'm promoting you to police reporter. Police reporter? Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> and the sooner you let that gang of hoodlums down there know that you're on the job, the better I'm going to like it. Well, when do I start? Right away. Go down to police headquarters and see what you can dig up. Yes, sir. Well, come on. Hop to it. Oh. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. And good luck. Oh, thank you, Miss Dexter. And thank you, sir, for this wonderful opportunity. Don't come back until you've got some real evidence. Understand? Yes, sir. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> well, I think that's the last we'll see of Double Day. <laughs> Dexter, remind me to cut your salary. Hey, fellas, I've just been promoted. I'm a full-fledged reporter now. Congratulations. Oh, Gee, Double yeah. Day, that's Thanks. swell. Oh. <laughs> nice going, kid. Well, thanks a lot, gang, but I have to report at police headquarters right away. Wait, wait, wait a minute. That hat. Oh, it's brand new. Don't you like it? That's what I mean. I thought it looked pretty good on me. Yeah. Now you're beginning to look like a reporter. Oh, thanks. You really think so? Certainly do. That tie, I don't like it. Too loud? No. Too long. Besides, all cub reporters wear bow ties. They do? Yeah. <coughs> and all reporters smoke cigars. These are for the boys down at the station. Put you in solid. And this is for you. <coughs> now you look like the real McCoy. Oh, thanks a lot, everybody, but now I really must be going. Just a minute. Freddie's got to take your picture first. My picture? What for? For the front page tomorrow. You know, copy boy makes good. Double day becomes reporter. Makes a big splash, you know what I mean? Gee. Uh, now, uh, let's have a look. Hold it right there for a minute. Ah, uh, that's right. Now, we can uh, correct the wrinkles, you see, and uh, fix up that, uh, that shiny nose. If this is a new color technique, we touch up the subject before we take the picture. Camera about ready, Freddy? Coming right up and loaded for color. Well, how's it look? Fine! Well, come on, the man's in a hurry. Now, nah, Doubleday, old boy, give us a nice, careless, nonchalant sort of a pose. You know, like you'd scoop the whole town with a big yarn. Give out with that personality. You know how it is. That's perfect. That's terrific. Now hold it. Hold it. Oh, my aching back. <laughs> <laughs>
Why, <laughs> <laughs> stop kick. You're the first of the old outfit I've seen since we split up at Tokyo. Well, it ain't the old sad sack of Company B. <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, I'm the new police reporter for the Tribune. Oh. Mr. Blake sent me to get evidence to help his campaign against the underworld. <laughs> I'm afraid you're a little late, kid. After that haul I made today, I don't think there's a gangster loose in town. <laughs> Got the whole mob in there awaiting trial. <laughs> My first day in uniform, too. Gee, that's swell, Ames. It'll be great news for Mr. Blake, too. He was pretty concerned about conditions here. He should be. With a lot of crooks running around posing as respectable citizens. Well, how'd you know they were criminals? Oh, just by looking at them. A cop can always tell. But come on in. This will give you a great story for your paper. Sit down. Right here. Hiya, Chief. Greetings, Your Honor. Officer... <laughs> Officer Ames reporting, sir. Would you kindly take the stand? Who, me? Yes, you. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Ah, <laughs> oh, this whole thing is a farce. Look at this. Arresting a man for killing his wife in public. Booking a prominent doctor as a second story man because he can't tell the difference between burglar tools and surgical instruments. You haven't got a case here, the whole water. You're all dismissed with the apologies of the court. You mean you turned them all loose? Hey, wait a minute. Your Honor, I caught this guy red-handed, fishing without a license. It's in the bag, here. Exhibits A, B, C, D and E. Is that right? That's right, Your Honor. I never gave it a thought. Well, unfortunately, ignorance of the law is no excuse. I'm going to have to find oh, you. Oh, but, Your Honor, you can't. I can't? The officer shouldn't have arrested him in the first place. You keep out of this. But, Ames, those are Samatilos Hmm? Hmm? They are? I would have sworn them was fish. Oh, they're fish, all right, Ames. Sematilus atromicolatus is their scientific name. Oh. They're commonly known as the chub, a scavenger fish. And no license has ever been required to catch them. You're right. Absolutely right. I'd forgotten what chub looked like. Caught a lot of them when I was a boy. Ah, happy, carefree days with a willow pole, barefoot lad with cheek of tan, <clears throat> Case dismissed. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, young man. Court's adjourned. You just couldn't keep your big mouth shut, could you? But, Ames, the, the man was innocent. Here, have a cigar. Have another. One more. Don't try to soft soap me. Ames! I'm sorry, Chief. Don't worry. I'll see the double day. Don't put nothing in the paper. And that's a promise. Oh, have a cigar, Chief. You too, Judge. Uh, <laughs> I uh, never smoke on duty. <laughs> Somebody get these astronomical chubatillises out of here. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Yes, sir. Isn't Mr. Blake getting pretty close to liable, attacking my client like this? Yeah, what's the idea always picking on me? All I do is run a legitimate burlesque house. Legitimate. That place of yours is just a front for all the racketeers in this town. Gamblers, con men, blackmailers, crooks of every description. That does it, Blake. I'll sue you. Go right ahead, Rankin. As Mr. Blake's attorney, nothing would suit me better than to get you on a witness stand. Then we might uncover the identity of the real man behind these rackets. Your real boss. That's the fellow I'm after. And don't think your cheap threats will stop Mr. Blake. He doesn't scare with a cent. You know, that's a funny thing. I don't either. Come on. I want to see Doubleday. Don't tell me he ain't here because I checked at the paper. He is here. This day. Uh, just a moment. Let me surprise you, huh? I'll do the 
you're talking. Now get this straight, Squirt. Everything that happened in police court today, forget it. Because if one word gets in the newspaper, I'll unscrew your head and use it for a doorknob. Sure, Ames. I, I don't want to get you into any trouble. Oh, a penny. Uh, this is Mr. Ames, an old army pal of mine. This is Miss Blake. Oh. How do you do? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm happy to know you. Yeah, uh, likewise. <laughs> Hello? I'm sorry Mr. Blake isn't here at the moment. Any message? Well, Mrs. Blake, you tell Mr. Blake we're through warning him about his campaign to clean up this town. So the boss is sending somebody over to pound a little sense into his thick head. Oh! Oh! So I'm to go to his office in the morning and warn him to lay off, or uh, I go to his wife and tell her about the little episode at the convention in Chicago, right? Right. And you'd better make it stick. Mother, mother! <laughs> of Dodo's. Oh, we're buddies. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, how do you do? Oh, how do you do? We've got to find Father to warn him. They're after him. What? Who's after him? Racketeers. Racketeers? Yes. They're coming over here to knock Father's head off or something. Oh, no. Well, don't just stand here. Somebody call the police. Yeah, that's a good idea. Police department, and snap it up. What am I doing? Now relax, all of you. Not a thing to worry about. I'll take charge here. <laughs> now you ladies oh, go right yeah. in and sit down and leave everything to me. Huh. Ames, maybe we should call the police. Huh? For a little help, I mean. Help? And let somebody else hog all the credit? Look, kid, this is my big chance. And what a scoop for you. Officer Ames outwits Underworld. Saves publisher's life single-handed. I know, Ames, but maybe we But nothing. Have you forgotten who was judo champ of our regiment? I'll give him this. And then some of this. And then I'll... Chief, I'm sorry, but that'll give you a rough idea what's going to happen to anybody who comes around here looking for trouble tonight. Oh, just a little something we used to do together in the army. You all get in the other room. I don't want anybody hurt in case there's any shooting. Looking for trouble, buddy? Well, who? Well, who's going? No. Whoa, 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 Oh, wanna play, huh? No. Look, gangster, go back and tell your mob I swallow a dozen tough guys like you every morning on the half ship. I guarantee you that ape will never bother anybody anymore. Oh, thank you, officer. And when Mr. Blake hears about this, he'll want to thank you, too. <laughs> Was he really a gangster? Gangster? Toughest looking gorilla I ever laid eyes on. You know, one of them low browed characters with little pig eyes and a jaw like a baboon. Lowest looking crook. Oh, so you come back for more, huh? Now give me room, folks, and I'll. Winfield! Why, Mr. Blake! Mr. Blake? You? Yeah, me! Toughest looking gorilla you ever saw, huh? Little pig eyes. Oh, draw me, like me. a baboon. Pig eyes. Draws like a baboon. Mr. Blake. Oh, you're crazy. 
you're making a terrible mistake, sir. Ames and I went through the war together. We're buddies. Yeah, yeah you're buddies. You're buddies. down in the office in the morning and make him understand. Office? He, he wouldn't even let me near the building. Didn't you hear what he said? Well, well, maybe if you got there before he did. That's right, kid. He can't keep you out if you're already in. It'll only make him madder, Penny. It's the only way, Dodo. For me, darling. <laughs> Hello, Wendy. I beg your pardon? Can I do for you? Oh, don't tell me you forgot. <laughs> Beginning to remember? Uh, Bubbles, uh, Bubbles LaRue. <laughs> Chicago, wasn't it? <laughs> what a convention. Uh, you said it. <laughs> you said it. Um... <laughs> uh, uh, what are you doing in town? Oh, same old thing, Burlicue. Uh, I just opened at the International. Oh. One of the theaters you're trying to close. Uh, don't tell me. Let me add it up. A local mob sent you here to put the squeeze on me. Well, that's their idea. But I think you and I can work out our own little deal. What would you pay to get the lowdown on this mob? Double cross them, huh? Oh, don't be so crude. Let's just call it collecting my old age pension. Your proposition. Well, it's all here in my diary. The name of the big boss and enough evidence to hang him. Also, a complete account of our little escapade in Chicago. <laughs> Take a squint. <clears throat> How much? Ten grand. That's a bargain. Now, here's the proposition. Have someone in my dressing room at 3 o'clock. Let them slip me the dough and I'll hand over the diary. And then, have him hit me over the head and knock me stiff. Say, what is this? It's got to look like somebody robbed me or no dice. If the boys ever got the idea that I sold out, no, i got to be caught cold and no fooling. Hello, Miss Dexter. Oh, Miss Blake. What's you, Miss Please, Mr. 
Mrs. Blake, don't go in yet. Are you all right? Oh. Oh, I'm sure he won't mind. Oh, but Mrs. Blake! I, I mean, Mrs. Blake! I don't see a minute. Oh, hello, Martha. Nice of you to pop in, but uh, really, I'm up to my... I, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm terribly busy. Uh, the campaign, you understand. Campaign. Uh, uh, it has Miss Dexter terribly upset. And you... Why, you're as jumpy as a, as a jack. Uh, Martha, some other time. I... And the dreadful way you treated poor Dorian last night. Oh. That's what I came in here to talk to you about. Now, don't start that again. I've got enough trouble with... Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Now the question's wait, done. Wait, wait a minute. Here, here, use this. Use this. No, no, here. I'll use the washroom. Oh, no! My Martha, Martha, wait a minute. No, no. Come, come here. Oh, oh, we oh. feel... Wait, wait. Don't, 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 don't. Martha! Martha, don't. Oh, excuse me. Well, a little accident. Thank you. I must say it's a surprise finding you here, but I'm glad it happened this way. Now we three can sit down and talk this over calmly. Did you uh, get everything fixed up with Mr. Blake? Not yet. That's all right. You leave it to me. Come on. Martha, I can explain it was... Winfield, why didn't you tell me Dorian was here? Well, I, I, I would. I, I would if I... If I if... Yeah, what if I seen if I seen that you wanted to know? I mean, if I known that you wanted wanted to see him, I, I. But dear, that's the reason I'm here today, so we can settle this misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? Yes. What misunderstanding? Why, Doubleday knows I was only joking last night, don't you, son? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. <laughs> I could have been mistaken, sir, but somehow I did get the impression I was fired. Fired. <laughs> Well, whatever gave you that idea? Why, well, you're getting another raise. We can't afford to have our future son-in-law working for peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, Winfield, this is all very confusing, but anyway, I'm delighted. And Penny will be so happy. Why, the poor girl was just about friends. Oh, I'll see you out, Mrs. Blake. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, hurry along. You, you'll miss the elevator. <laughs> and come right back, Doubleday. That's uh, a new assignment, you know. Yes, <laughs> You can come on now, Bubbles. Uh, uh, how, how, how come she didn't see you? That pixie of yours pushed me into the shower. Who is that guy in Oh, never mind him. We've got to get you out of here. Three o'clock in your dressing room. I'll have somebody there with a the cash. Where's my coat? Oh, I, 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 I threw it out the window. You what? No, no, I'll, buy, I'll buy you a new one. Look, Mandra, uh, how does the girl get out of here like this? Oh, yeah, well, that's right. Wait a minute. Here, 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 here. Take this one. This one there. Hurry up. Get it on. Get out of here. No, no, not that way. Not that way. Here. Shall I see her to the elevator, too? I got her out of here. She, that diary sounds like a real clue. Are you going down to the theater and get it? No, you are. Boy, what a scoop. Uh, here, have a cigar. Now, calm down. This is serious. Go down to Stafford's office and he'll give you the money. I'll phone him and explain. Yes, sir. Now, just a minute. Don't forget, after you get the diary, you've got to knock her out. Oh, but I couldn't. I, I never hit a lady before. All right, if you won't do it, you'll never see my daughter again. Oh, I'll, I'll do it, sir. But where will I hit her? I'll hit her... Uh, here, hit her about there. Like this? No, oh, not so hard. That would kill her. J just a tap. Now, come on, get going. I'll meet you outside the theater. Uh, remember now, son, not a word of this to anybody. Oh, no, sir. My lips are sealed. Fine, fine. <laughs> What are you guys talking at? Come on, get to work. Hey, there he is. Dodo, what happened? Come 
you listen to reason? I'll explain later, Penny. Excuse us a minute. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, sure, kid. Here you are. Thanks. Dodo, you're not going to hit father. Oh, no, of course not. It's just a little private matter I've got to straighten out before you and I can get married. I'll see you later. What was all the whispering about? Oh, nothing much. He's just got to go down to the International and interview a, a burlesque queen by the name of uh, Bubbles LaRue. <laughs> interview her with a blackjack? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. That don't make sense. What's he up to with my blackjack? What's he up to with that Bubbles LaRue? Yeah. Hmm. So that's a little matter he has to straighten out before we can get married. Come on, let's go down there. Yeah. The stairs are quicker. Well, Double A, this is a pretty important assignment for a new reporter. We should be mighty proud of Mr. Blake's confidence in you. Oh, it's really nothing. Everything's arranged. I just have to get the diary from Miss LaRue. Diary? Oh, a diary. Yes, of course. Well, good luck, son. Thank you, sir. kids are at the end of the hall. Oh, nothing like that, sir. I have sort of an appointment with Miss LaRue. Two doors down, but she's on now. <laughs> she's picking them kind of young this season. Oh. oh, this isn't a social call, sir. Strictly business. <laughs> I've had it for years. I don't know what I'd do without little Bertha here. She's the only thing that can stop me once I get this speech. Okay, wait a minute. I gotta set the stage. This Miss LaRue. 
Miss LaRue. Miss LaRue, is it all right? Miss LaRue. I didn't do it. Honest. around the alley and cover that. You two cover the door around the side. Well, hi, Mr. Blake. Oh, hello, Chief. How are you? <laughs> what are you, on a slumming tour? Or are you a patron of the fine arts? No, I just on a way to a business appointment. You know, I was... Uh, 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 my campaign, you know. <laughs> uh, what's all the excitement? What's up? From here, it looks like murder. Uh, mur murder? Who? Who murdered who? Let's go inside and we'll find out. Oh, no, I've got... Come on, come on. There may be a story in this for you. One thing's certain, no professional would leave his calling card. Obviously, the work of an amateur. Amateur? It's the work of a moron, if you ask me. Did you? Did you? Gee, thanks, sir, for not telling about my appointment with Miss LaRue. It would have been kind of awkward if they suspected me. That's all right, son. Think nothing of it. I may be able to solve this crime. You see, I know why she was killed. Why, I may be able to put my finger on the murderer any minute. Hi, Chief. What's cooking? Ames, I thought I assigned you to the hot shop detail. What are you doing here? Well, it was like this. I was tailing somebody, and what do you know? He leads me right to this show. You don't say. Yeah, and what a show. Say, that bubbles LaRue. <laughs> She's out of this world. Ames, you're right for the first time since you've joined the force. <laughs> Why, Penny? Penny, what in the world? Daddy, what are you doing here? Get out of here. Go on home. Oh, not so fast, Miss Blake. What do you know about Bubbles LaRue? I prefer not to discuss Miss LaRue. Oh, Daddy, I've been so wrong about Dodo. Why, Penny, you don't think I came here to... I don't think anything, Mr. Doubleday. I know why you came here. Penny, shut up. Something terrible has happened. Miss LaRue has, has been murdered. Oh, Dodo. Oh, Penny, no. So you had a date with Miss LaRue. But you're in love with Miss Blake. Don't deny it. You want to marry her. But Miss LaRue was in your way. She was jealous of you. She had your love letters in the trunk. I... And you're sleeping here like a rat. You hid in that closet. And when you saw your chances sprang out, you knocked it to the floor and killed her. Come on, I'll admit it. Speak up! I've been trying to, sir. Now we're beginning to get somewhere. Come on, Harris, take down his confession. I know I'd make him crack. Well, let's have the whole story. Why did you kill her? I didn't. And if you'll pardon my saying so, sir, the modern criminologist would consider your methods extremely unscientific. You don't say so. Oh, yes, sir. The new technique is to reconstruct the crime from the material evidence on the scene. For instance, this coat. As you see, sir, it's a man's coat. Obviously, it belongs to a, a large man. Someone about the size of... Well, um, Mr. Blake, for instance. <laughs> well, Blake, when he gets through gardening, maybe you'll tell me why you came down here today. I, I told you I had, a, I had a business appointment. Well, you won't mind slipping into Exhibit 2, just to see how it fits. Well, well, what a coincidence. It fits you like a glove. Just like the skin on a baby hippo. Now, ain't that misfortune. Davis. I want you to fingerprint everybody in this room. Okay. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Blake. I want to compare prints. Come on, Blake. This is an outrage. It's unconstitutional. Right, you Congressman. Over here. Oh, I, I haven't done anything. I don't. I don't. I don't. Wait a minute. I don't think... Oh, sir. Oh, sir. You want to randomize it, Mr. Patchy? 
and I can assure you one false move would be too bad for this young lady. Get going.
Take your guns and tie them up. Drop that gun. I got it, Mr. Blake. Dodo, look out. Get that diary. I'll shoot. One more step and I'll shoot. You won't shoot. Yes, I will. editorials. Dodo, where's Dodo? Come on, buddy. Get up. There's enough evidence in this to hang you. I'll take that. All right, boys, take them out. Dodo, you okay? Oh, yes, I'm all right. Dodo, forgive me for doubting you. Oh, that's all right. Oh, not here. <laughs> 